Uh, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate the uh, uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, a lot of familiar faces out there. It's uh, good to see you today. Uh, as, as Kathy said, uh, I usually talk an hour or more uh, about the alphabet uh, here at First Methodist. Uh, this came about several years ago. Uh, my uh, oldest daughter, Jocelyn, was, had finished her uh, uh, degree in elementary education. One of her uh, friends gave her an urban alphabet, which I dearly love because I'm an urban planner. But I said, you know, what do you need pictures of New York when we could have, you could have a poster of, of your home church? She's up in Oklahoma now, so uh, I, I did the poster for her and it's been used for a number of different things uh, over the, a period of time. Uh, Mark uh, Burroughs has used it for a children's moment. Uh, I pass it out when I talk to the uh, confirmation class each uh, year about the history of the church. But the way the program is set up, it's, uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, it's really set up as a question and answer deal. Uh, I'll rush through it pretty quick, but I welcome you to give me the answer. The first slide is always, uh, where is the alphabet letter found? And then if you can tell me where that is, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. And then we can go into some of the, what the letter means. So where's the A found? Kneelers. But if you go in the sanctuary, you can't find it because it's not on the regular kneelers. It is on the bride's kneeler. The bride's kneeler and the groom's kneeler are only used during communion, during a wedding. And so they're kept back in a closet. And so unless you come to a wedding, you cannot see the Alpha and Omega Stitching. Here's a picture of the whole uh, bride's kneeler. A lot of symbolism with the Alpha and Omega, the, the flowers and the fruit, and the doves. And then there's also a matching groom's kneeler that also goes with it. Uh, the A is for the architect. Uh, uh, Wally G. Clarkson was the architect of First Methodist Church. Uh, he did a number of notable buildings in, in Fort Worth. In fact, uh, Three of the top 25 buildings in Fort Worth are included in his uh, resume. First Methodist, Masonic Temple, and of course the Sinclair Building. Uh, just a sample of a few of the other buildings that he did. Where's the bee found? Stained glass window, where? Not, no, no. We've got stained glass in, in the chapel. So this is from Memorial Chapel. Uh, at the top, there are quadrifoils at the top of each set of, of windows. There are 10 windows uh, in the memorial chapel that tell the story of the Bible. And at the top is this quadrifoil, so I've taken a portion of that and sort of rotated a little bit uh, to create the B. There we go. This is also the quadrifoil that we used when we did the signage in 2009. So uh, Sarge Hill took the photograph and, and we enhanced it. Uh, and it's on most of the signage around the church. B, of course, stands for the Bible, uh, the basis of our faith. But it also stands for Dr. Barry Bailey, who is senior pastor here from 1976 to 1994. Dr. Tim Brewster, uh, who's the present pastor of the church. Uh, where is the C found? It's a menorah, yes. Uh, it's, an, it's another kneeling cushion. Now this one is in the, uh, in the sanctuary all the time. Uh, there are actually 16 kneeling cushions that are in there. Uh, they're rotated now that the center section is taken out. So there are 32 designs on the kneeling cushions. And four of the designs are from the Old Testament. Ryan, I'm, I'm not quite getting it. There we go. So uh, the menorah. Here's a full picture of, of that portion. And then, oops, anyway, the, the four uh, kneeling cushions. Uh, C is for circuit riders. Uh, when the Methodist Church came to, uh, to this area, at the time when uh, Fort Worth was still a fort, uh, actually, because it was a fort from a, uh, 1849 to 1853, uh, but in 1852, the first circuit riders started coming to the Fort Worth area. And for the next 20 years, there were a series of 14 different circuit riders that were assigned to the Fort Worth area. Uh, it was originally the Red Oak Conference and the Alton Mission. Uh, circuit riders' life was very, very hard. 
um, obviously because they had to, to live out in the wilderness and, and uh, move from uh, community to community. The very first circuit rider that was assigned to the Fort Worth area was John Wesley Chalk, another C. Uh, he was only here for, uh, for one year. Uh, it, he was only 26 years old when he was assigned to, the, uh, to this area. He had just been widowed. widowed and uh, these are the, the, the best pictures, we, uh, photographs that we have of, of Chark. Uh, where's the defan? Chapel, yes. It, it is uh, another stained glass window from the chapel. And uh, I hope you can see the letters. Some of the letters are a little bit harder to see, but in this case, the D was actually uh, rotated around. Uh, D is for Dr. Wayne Day. He was pastor here from 1995 to 2003. And also the Day Resource Center. Day Resource Center is one of the many uh, outreach missions that First Methodist have, has been very instrumental in starting uh, here in the community. Of course, Samaritan House, we're involved in that. We're also involved in the Presbyterian Night Shelter starting. Uh, where is the EFAN? I know y'all have seen this from this side. The parking lot. Heck yeah. You've seen this presentation before. Sorry. Yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is actually, in, in far, maybe I'll help to rotate around. This is uh, the uh, main parking lot in front. Here it is, or this is the full view. It's actually taken from uh, inside the, the tower. Uh, when uh, Florence Street was closed uh, in 1968, uh, Dr. Foote actually laid out uh, the uh, the landscaping area there, which is a big green cross. So when you fly over the city, you see this big green cross in front of First Methodist. So uh, I was up in the tower one day and, and took the photograph uh, of the big E. E is for Epworth, England, uh, the birthplace of John uh, Wesley and also Charles Wesley. Uh, their father, Samuel Wesley, was the rector uh, in uh, Epworth, England. And of course, Epworth Hall was named after uh, uh, Epworth. Uh, Epworth Hall was built in 1956 and has been remodeled as the Justin Building you know, with additions and it's, it's where our youth meet every Sunday. Where's the F? It's the, uh, the west side of the building. If you go in the west parking lot over by the offices, uh, you see, and, and again, trying to find an F was hard. <laughs> but so, F is for uh, Fourth Street Church. Uh, this was the first uh, building uh, that was uh, housed the, the congregation from 1874 to 1887. Uh, it was a one room uh, church, a wood frame. Uh, it was about 40 foot by 80 foot, which is about the size of Wesley Hall here. And so, it was actually called Fourth Street Church because it was on the corner of Fourth and Jones. And it became First Methodist in 1889 because by that time we had started two other uh, satellite churches and we were the mother church and, and be, began calling ourselves First Methodist in 1889. Uh, F, of course, is for Dr. Gaston Foote. He was senior pastor here as I was growing up in uh, the children's division and youth division. Uh, he was here for 20 years from 1952 to 1950, uh, 1972. And also the First Methodist Church Foundation. It was started in 1964. I uh, have a photograph of, of John Brelsford, of course, who, the business manager who brought the idea of the foundation to the church. Uh, and then Dr. Lamar Smith, actually, after he retired uh, for the first time from the ministry, he came back to be the first full-time director of the First Methodist Mission. Uh, the foundation. Uh, the foundation uh, has a, a, a corporal of about over 5, uh, 25 million now and has done uh, over $31 million worth of improvements to the church facilities over the years. Where's the G found? This is actually one of my favorite. The G is, is uh, in the chandelier in the sanctuary. So uh, if you're, you know, during the sermon, just look up and you know, the other. So, G is for the groundbreaking. The groundbreaking for this facility was on a Tuesday, October the 29th, 1929, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, anything significant about that date? That's exactly right. The stock market crashed that day, and so we'd already sold the uh, the previous church building and uh, 
property for 360000 and a gold bond program had been done to raise additional money for this facility. But I, I'm just amazed that with the groundbreaking on the day the stock market crashed that uh, the congregation went ahead with the construction of this magnificent campus, uh, which was actually the first million dollar facility in Fort Worth. Where's the H found? It's a little fuzzy, but it's, it's some of the woodwork on the pulpit. Uh, there's a, a lantern on the pulpit that's carved into the pulpit. Now, my question is, why is a lantern carved into the pulpit? Yeah. Actually, the pulpit and then the two side areas uh, are called prayer desk. And they're the six events leading up to, uh, to the crucifixion. So they're the passions of the Christ. Uh, the lantern represents uh, the Romans coming to the Garden of Gethsemane with their lantern uh, to arrest Jesus. And then we have a representation of the Last Supper, the denial of, of Peter, the crucifixion, and the empty cross as well. H is for Dr. Eugene Hawk, who is pastor here from uh, 1925 to 1930. Uh, here's a, a picture of Dr. Hawk in the courtyard uh, with the Hyder class. Uh, probably back in the 20s, you can tell by the hats and the, the flapper, you know, the furs and everything. Uh, where is the eye found? Any guesses? Well, the thing that's troubling to me is that it's red brick around it. Where is the red brick in the church? Yeah. Well, actually, the church is made of red brick, and it's clad with the beige brick on the outside. So this is actually inside uh, the West Tower where the, uh, where the bells are. Uh, there's a Garland Organ Company. Uh, so this is a, a photograph. So, so those are actually the windows from the inside. Uh, so it's red brick on the inside and then the beige terracotta brick on the outside. And, and that's my daughter. You know, you know. So, uh, and this is where the bells were installed. Uh, uh, back in the 70s. I is for the infant formula program, uh, one of the uh, first uh, outreach missions uh, of the church, uh, besides the, uh, the clothing bank and the food bank. Uh, the infant formula program was done uh, in this former uh, garage over on First Street. It was remodeled and the infant formula uh, wing was added. Of course, there's been two additional uh, expansions of the missions over the years. Anybody recognize the J? It's one, of the, one of the paintings in the hall, yeah, exactly. It's Joseph's arm uh, from the Holy F Family of the Lamb by Raphael. And so we have, we have a wonderful resource with all the paintings in the hallways, but, and these are accurate original reproductions, if you will. So, and Kathy can tell you more about that than I can. Uh, Jay is for the justice ministry. Uh, uh, Brooks Harrington does a wonderful job in, in a very unique ministry to, uh, to the downtown population of, of Fort Worth. It's also, Jay is for Reverend uh, Warren Johnson, who is pastor here from 1942 to 1951. It was while uh, uh, Reverend Johnson was here that we retired the note on this facility. It was actually a 30-year note uh, for, the, uh, for this campus, and it was paid off in 15 years in 1945. And then, of course, uh, J is for Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the, this is uh, the statue that's out in front. Some people call it the Jesus parking lot. The question I always ask is, what is the book he's holding? Everybody says it's the Bible, but I, I think they used scrolls back then. I'm not sure, but, you know, so... Uh, uh, where's the K found? Uh, it's from the disciple shields uh, above the choir loft. Uh, above the choir loft, there are 12 shields uh, symbolizing the uh, various disciples, and then the three shields of the Trinity are directly above the large cross in the middle. So uh, uh, there's symbolism. It matches the symbolism of the various kneelers and the cross stitching that was done there as well. So. K is for Dr. Uh, H.D. Knickerbocker, who is pastor at the 7th and Taylor Church. Uh, this is the building before we moved here to, uh, uh, to Fifth Street. 
Uh, he was pastor from uh, 1905 to 1909, and the congregation grew dramatically during that time. It was a magnificent structure with the Richardsonian arch in the front and the Corinthian columns in front, but the building was just too small. I mean, even when they moved into the building, they left the church offices over at 4th and Jones uh, in, the, in the old brick building. Uh, and so quickly, uh, as time moved on, downtown expanded and they tried to buy the rest of the block. They had a hard time doing that, so they moved here. Where's the yell found? Chair, the chairs, the pastor's chairs uh, behind the pulpit. So here's a shot of all th three of the pastor's chairs. And of course the symbol uh, symbolism on all these kneelers is just amazing. L is for Lyle Lodge. I hope everybody here has been to Lyle Lodge and enjoyed Lyle Lodge. Some of these are, are from the 60s. Uh, it's 6.3 uh, acres on Eagle Mountain Lake. Uh, it's uh, named after uh, Dr. Judge Lyle who helped secure the, the lease and the property for the church from the water board. Also, L, we can't forget Dr. Bill Longsworth. Uh, came here as a Bible scholar and actually served as senior pastor here in the interim uh, after Dr. Day left. Uh, where's the M fan? Everybody recognizes this, I hope. Yeah, yeah these are the, the arches that, that connect the sanctuary with Wesley Hall. Uh, Here's a, a, a photograph I took a couple years ago. It actually ended up on the church's Christmas card uh, that year. Or here's the, the reverse view from inside uh, when we had a, that rear snowstorm. So, but originally the courtyard was all paved. There were no, there's no landscaping or trees in the courtyard. It was all paved because uh, when the church was built, there was no air conditioning. So they, uh, on a on a pleasant night in the spring or the fall, they would meet out in. Uh, in the garden, uh, in the plaza, if you will, and uh, have outdoor services there from the outdoor pulpit. M is for, of course, Methodist Church and Methodist Unifications. There have been two major Methodist Unifications. In 1939 was the unification of the uh, Methodist Episcopal Church North and the Methodist Episcopal Church South. Uh, we were Methodist Episcopal Church South and we actually merged with St. Paul's Methodist, which was just a few blocks away, which was Methodist Church North uh, in 1930, before we moved into this building. But the overall denomination merged in 1939. And then in 1968, the merger with the United Brethren created the United Methodist Church. Methodist ministers, MMs, uh, you know, uh, I have to mention uh, E.D. Muzon, uh, one of the first pastors here that went on to become a bishop. Uh, from 1897 to, to 1900. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Alonzo Monk, his uh, father and uncle were also, also Methodist ministers up in Arkansas. Uh, his granddaughter's actually here, active here in the church today. And then uh, we can't forget Mike Marshall. He's another double M, so. M, M is for mission. This is the one exception I make uh, in my presentation. I, there's just so many different things that this church does. I feel like that this, what this church is known for besides the, the beautiful facility here, but there are just so many different mission opportunities that you can become involved in for outreach here locally uh, and also internationally. You know, uh, the Kenya mission, the room at the end, the Habitat for Humanity, uh, Costa Rica mi mission trip, and of course, you know, volunteering at the First Street mission. Uh, and then. In addition to that, all the mission trips uh, that the youth make, uh, as well as adults as well. So, uh, in, does that look familiar? Okay, this is the intertwined Gothic arches uh, above the choir loft in the sanctuary. Uh, right now there's a, a black plastic behind it because Dan Garland is back in the organ chamber redoing the organ. But. Uh, here's the postcard you showed me. Uh, this is, uh, in is from Neighborhood Church. First Methodist moved out here on the edge of downtown from uh, Seventh and Taylor because we wanted to be a neighborhood church. And when we moved here in, in 1930, we, we had houses around us. There were boarding houses directly across the street. Uh, there were houses behind us, and that's an elementary school, John Peter Smith Elementary, in the background. And the exciting part to me is that I think we're becoming a neighborhood church. I mean, again, 
we've been a regional church. People come from all over Tarrant County and the surrounding counties to come to this magnificent cathedral of, of uh, Methodism. But now we have people that can watch a church, and I think that's our mission is to reach out to them to become involved in our church. Oh, doorknob, yes, you see it everywhere. And it's this rich detail that they included in the architecture of the building that I think is just so great. Uh, o is for organ. Uh, the uh, Reuter organ was the largest organ west of the Mississippi when it was installed. It's aged, and so now Dan Garland's uh, uh, organ company, I hope some of you uh, went out to his shop to see uh, the, uh, the prototype of, of how it's going to be laid out. But if you haven't donated to the organ fund, I encourage you to do so. Uh, where's the pea found? This, this is uh, on the Corinthian columns on the outside of the front of the church. So it's just looking at some of the, this is a, a white terracotta clay that is, makes the ornamentation around the doors at the front of the church on our main entry. P is for St. Paul Methodist Episcopal Church North. As I mentioned earlier, we consolidated with St. Paul in 1930 prior to moving into this building, but it was only located a few blocks away from uh, the Seventh and Taylor Church, basically right across uh, Burnett Park. Uh, That's a church, uh, and uh, looking back at Burnett Park from here, uh, it's a uh, Here's a map that sort of shows how close we were, just a couple of blocks away from each other. Uh, where's the Q found? Now see, normally I give this out to, to the uh, confirmands, and they have to go out on a scavenger hunt and try and find these letters. Now, now I do give the adults the answer key that has the answers on them. So, so this is a, one of the quatrefoils uh, in, the, in the pulpit, uh, behind the pulpit. Uh, a lot of quatrefoils uh, throughout the church. In fact, uh, let's just say Q is for quatrefoil. So here are a, a few of the locations. Uh, Memorial Chapel, the doorknobs, uh, the, uh, the chandeliers, uh, stained glass windows. So uh, it's found throughout the church. And why the quatrefoil? Well, Q actually stands for the Wesleyan Quadrilateral, uh, the four premises of the Methodist Church. We rely on scripture first, tradition, reason, and experience. And it's looking at all four of those that gives us our faith. And it's a thinking faith. We may not all agree with exactly the theology of the person sitting next to us, but it gives us a rich history of, of talking about that script, uh, the tradition and experience. What's your personal experience? And, and does that make sense to you? So, uh, What is R? Where's the R found? Well, if you actually lay down in the sanctuary and look straight up at the bottom of a chandelier and you saw the, the beautiful stenciling on, on the ceiling, uh, that's actually what you would see. So, so it's looking at, up at the bottom of the chandelier with the uh, stenciling on the ceiling. So, you don't have to lay on the floor. You can actually lay in the pew and do that if you want to. So, R is for the first religious radio broadcast. Uh, uh, it was on May the 3rd, uh, 1922 on WBAP. It was the pastor, uh, Reverend Bergen from First Methodist that made that first uh, uh, radio broadcast. Uh, WBAP actually just started the day before on May the 2nd, 1922. So, uh, so my question is, who was listening to the radio broadcast? <laughs> no, nobody had radios yet. You don't buy a radio until there's you know, stuff to hear. But anyway, but it, it is out there, you know. <laughs> Uh, it was broadcast. And then one of the regular uh, uh, Saturday night radio programs was Mrs. Barnum's uh, uh, Bible study class. Of course, uh, in, the, in the 20s, uh, there were not female pastors in the Methodist Church. And so the, Mrs. Barnum basically uh, uh, went over the Bible study the night before so you're ready for the, uh, for the sermon the next morning. Where's the S found? Uh, ultra rail. And, uh, and see, this, this picture is getting dated because it has red carpet there. And actually, it's before we split the communion rail. So now we have a gap in the communion rail and we have the slate floors in there instead of the red carpet. And so, 
S is for slate flooring. So, <laughs> so this is uh, uh, when over the, uh, that summer that we, we put in a couple years ago. Uh, S is for Dr. Lamar Smith and also the Sundance Square Church. Uh, this was the second church building. It was on the same side as the original 4th Street Church. Uh, we occupied it from 1887 to uh, 1908. And uh, to me, you know, with the two uneven towers, it's very similar to our, you know, our current church building. But it, this is where we had the red brick, actually. But it's still the oldest brick structure in Tarrant County. The confirmation class goes there to, uh, uh, as part of their curriculum each year. Uh, and the T. Have y'all seen the T before? Well, it's part of the Latin cross above the choir loft. So, so if you look at the, the full cross, there you go. T is for uh, the Taylor and 7th Street Church. I've already talked about this a little bit. Uh, it had two open dome towers uh, on the 7th Street uh, side. Of course, when we occupied the church, uh, there were actually still uh, dirt streets. The streets were not paved yet. Electricity had just been brought to the area, so we have electric poles just right outside. Here are a couple of pictures from on the side, and then also one uh, inside the, the sanctuary. There was a large dome with, uh, uh, over the sanctuary, and then the choir actually sang in the back, from the back in the back balcony. T, I've got to say television ministry. Uh, Worked in the TV, television ministry since 1974, and uh, of course, even though we're not doing a live broadcast on broadcast TV anymore, we do live streaming of both the 11:11 service and the sanctuary service every Sunday, and then you can look at it uh, on YouTube if you want to. We have two YouTube channels, and also we do uh, live streaming of the children's first service, as well as uh, a lot of weddings. The you. Yeah, the stained glass windows and Memorial Chapel, yes. So, so this is the, the top of, of those. And actually, there's a whole program I could do on, the, on Memorial Chapel because I, I think that people do not appreciate the stained glass windows in there. Uh, there is the whole story of the Bible in the various panels of Memorial Chapel. U is for Dr. Walter Underwood, uh, here from 1972 to 1975. Uh, he was a dramatic change from Dr. Foote. I don't know if you all remember uh, at that time, but uh, uh, he had uh, two teenage boys, uh, uh, and uh, he brought a lot of vitality to the church. Even though he was only here for a short while, he did start the, the television ministry. We'd had uh, the, some sharing of the mobile truck on Sunday morning when Dr. Foote was here, but it was uh, Dr. Underwood that actually brought the television ministry to the church. And he later became a bishop after serving in Houston. Where's the V? Hopefully you can tell by the stenciling around it that it's in the ceiling of the sanctuary. And uh, actually it's what they, they call the antiphonal area of the organ. Uh, and with the organ restoration, actually, they'll be putting uh, organ pipes in the back, so we will actually have surround sound at that time. Uh, v is for the Valentine there. This is an old photograph of this room, Wesley Hall, when it had a wooden floor, and I uh, love this picture. You know, uh, heart-shaped table for Valentine's Day. Everybody's sitting, boy, girl, boy, girl. You know, it's, it's really nice, yeah. So, so. So uh, V is for va uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, Mark Burroughs has done a, a wonderful job of, of growing the children's ministry here and is actually uh, uh, working with the National uh, Methodist Church on the curriculum for Vacation Bible School year after next now because of you know, uh, the things that he's done here with is Mr. Mark. W, I'm sure everybody recognizes the top of the towers. Uh, so just to sort of enjoy the architecture, here's, here's several different photos of, of the, uh, the uneven towers. W is for the walkover. The walkover occurred on October the 30th, 1930. Uh, the sanctuary wasn't quite complete yet, but uh, from uh, the Seventh and Taylor Church here, uh, we did the walkover to the current campus. Uh, 
Betty Ambrose, of course, was part of that walkover. Uh, and, uh, and many of the families are still involved here at the church. So, you were in the walkover? Wow. That's right. Well, I've always wondered what route y'all took. <laughs> what route? Did you go down 7th Street? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That still counts. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> exactly. Where's the X? Kneeling cushions, exactly right. This is the kneeling cushion for uh, uh, the disciple, uh, St. Andrew. Uh, of course, it's an X because he, would not be cru he did not want to be crucified on a Latin cross like Jesus, so he was crucified on an X-shaped cross. Uh, the kneeling cushions actually have all 12 disciples depicted on them. Uh, again, there's a lot of symbolism and history of this that Lewis Summer could talk about for hours, I know. So, uh, uh, but here, here are the 12 disciple uh, kneeling cushions that are found in the library. X is for our expanding church campus. Uh, Kathy mentioned I'm a city planner, and so it's just fascinating to me over the years how we have slowly bought up the property around us. Uh, as Howard Shelton always used to say, the three Ps are the most important thing for a downtown church. Parking, parking, parking. <laughs> and so, so we have a nine block area now with uh, the surface parking lots and the, the mission and the foundation building as well. Uh, where's the Y found? North X, exactly. You can, and you know, I, I don't think a lot of people realize how beautiful the North X was until we put in the fluorescent lights, you know, the uh, uh, energy efficient lights because now it's a lot brighter when you come in from the outside and you can see the scripture uh, that's uh, written on the walls there as well. Why is for the YWCA, for the child care program that the church uh, funds uh, over there? And it's also for youth. Actually, that's uh, Genesis 2 when my wife and I sang in the youth group. Uh, I think actually David Benepe's over there on the side with his trumpet. So, so but... Uh, Anyway, so the youth program, uh, Casey has done an amazing job of revitalizing the youth and uh, all, all the different programs they do. Well, we've come to Z. Where's the Z fan? It's actually in the ceiling of the back of the sanctuary again, very close to where I, I, I took the V as well. And what does Z stand for? Well, it's the end of the program. So, so, so. <laughs> 